Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to round four or five of FNM here at Nerd Rage Gaming. I'm your host, Andrew Donnelly. With me, as always, my co-host, Matt Dow. Matt, it's Alex Pressing back, baby. Yeah. He's here in round four. Playing some terrible deck. Playing that Jeskai Guy aggro. No. No. Jacob Jensen, playing the red-white aggro, the better version. The better of the version. Deck. And leading it off with the Temple of Triumph. Yep. Not a bad way oh to start. Oh my god, look at these mirror tempered. This triumphs. is happening. This is what people have wanted. They want the red white aggro versus the Jess guy see aggro. See who's the better deck? Yeah, why not? Oh, this isn't red white. This oh, is Jess guy versus on a Jess second. guy. What is going on? Oh man, got confused here. Oh, I guess he does have disdainful stroke in his sideboard. Gross. Oh, that's dangerous. Well, here I it hope is. they both lose. <laughs> it's a seeker of the way. Uh, I imagine this is going to get. Lightning struck and or Jacob is going to cast a raise the alarm. A raise the alarm. Raise the alarm. Okay. So maybe we're on a tokens plan here. Maybe I like I would be okay with that, a Jess guy aggro tokens. Just to see that kind of flop around. What is he I like the the uh dog token he's got there. Yeah. I know you also like to watch things flop around. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you got wait. What did so lightning strike? You got a lightning You're strike. Kill the seeker of the way, way, and then attack with the tokens. <laughs> Put him down Jeez. to eighteen. Wow, just full bore there, huh? We'll see a scry real quick off of Alex. I'm gonna ship to the bottom. Just pass back the turn. It's hard for these uh, these decks to really use their their main board burn spells against tokens. That's kind of yep. It's always the interesting thing, unless I guess arc lightning, but yeah. So. Flood train, gonna find a uh, planes for Jacob. Mm hmm. Do, do, do. Gonna untap. Draw. Ooh. I like Another those. racy alarm. What kind of islands are those? Uh, they have like portalish islands. There's a no. Jess guy ascendancy. No, they're definitely probably. Deck uh, for two. It's a weatherlight. One of them's gonna get wild slash. Weatherlight, or you're going I believe to so. weatherlight? Did Weatherlight even have islands? <laughs> Weatherlight had islands. Are you sure? I'm almost positive. I'm that pretty sure they Urza's. didn't. Those are not... Uh, they could be Urza's they saga. They could be. Uh, Alex quick tapping for three here to play a Manus Rider. Rider. Tack in. 17. So I believe I have life totals correct here. As Alex only took one. There we go. We've got 16, 16 to 18. Correct life totals is... I think that's 16... 16. All right. Huh. 16, 16. 16, 16 we're at now. Okay. Sure. There is a Battlefield Forge. Ooh, another Jeskai Ascendancy. So we can get the ball rolling here with this Jeskai Ascendancy. At least make it hard for this Manus Rider to block us. Oh, yeah. We can go crazy. Right? We can uh, Jeskai Ascendancy. Jeskai Ascendancy. So this is... We this can... is I, would, I would almost say this is Jeskai Tokens. We've changed the name of this deck multiple times. Now he's going to cast Raise the Alarm? Yeah. So trigger... Did he loot already or not? No, he or doesn't have to loot. It's a May. He's going to take a damage, though. To he's cast, cast the Raise the Alarm. Sure. I kind of like attacking. First. And then? Yeah. Because sure. then we get to untap our guy. Which isn't super relevant, but... He we maybe get him to block, and then we trade our guy. Not to loot again? Yeah. I think he has Whirling Outburst in hand. Where are the Raise the Alarm tokens? Uh, they are coming. They are incoming. <laughs> Boom. I do like the dog token. That's pretty sweet. Oh, now you like the dog token? Yeah, I wasn't paying oh, attention. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to make the uh, make the joke. The joke. Yeah, that was a terrible joke, by the way. No, that was a great joke. That was awful. I didn't even laugh. Not yeah. even a little bit. You did. You chuckled. Now there's a goblin. Yeah. Now there's a soldier. He's coming. Oh, there you man. Go. No more dog That's what That's you get for shame. making terrible jokes. There's dog tokens get taken away. That's dangerous. Life is dangerous. Life is. Uh, so we'll see the goblin come in. Can I attack uh, the four? I imagine you just take this and then try to kill him next turn. With two cards in your hand. Right. Two Jess guys on this. We need to cast. And he's at 12. Oh, uh, Wild Slash. What a jerk. He's just going to shoot one of the tokens. That's fine. Uh, so we need to make these six powers. We need to cast three spells. Mm -hmm. I don't foresee that happening. Ooh. We got that Hordling Outburst into. So we. Hordling see Outburst <laughs> kind of does something for us here. Maybe. I mean, it lets us attack with our guys, and then have guys on dude back to chump. Yep. Uh, I'm in favor of casting the Hoarding Outburst and uh, <coughs> cycling the Seeker of the Way. I agree with you. Only problem with that is, like, what are we going to draw? Um, Potentially a burn spell. 
I feel like mm. is pretty relevant. Yeah, but we can't cast it. But yeah, I, I think that's fine. Is that a treasure cruise? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good draw. So we're going to get some goblins, and these are going to be four fours? No, three threes. And we just drew a burn spell. Wait. Why did we draw? We drew a stoke the flames. Oh, we trigger triggered. Yeah, why Why don't we keep the stoke? Uh, so we can so the spell fire doesn't the resolve. Cruise? Oh. And the spell doesn't resolve. What spell doesn't resolve? The, the like, hordling alphors doesn't resolve, so we can't convoke. Oh, it hasn't resolved yet? It has not. Oh, the interesting. On the stack. Okay, very cool. No, but we're going to charge a cruise and make our guys 4 force. And probably attack. So I imagine we attack here. Those guys are oh, big. We man. have a Stoke the Flames, too. Did okay, we play a land so this turn? We did not. Nope. So we can attack and just kill our opponent? That seems okay. Uh, Goblins can not attack? It's going to Stoke. Yep. Stoke that, untap. Uh, then he is going to loot. I think he has another stoke in He <laughs> does. Uh, yeah, stoke suggests the ascendancy is pretty good. Now he's going to loot again. Discard a land. Oh, jeez. And then I imagine he's going to stoke again. Kill the Rabble Master. Yeah, and then kill our opponent. So, yeah. Oh, boy. I think so. Uh, nope, just nope. going to attack. Okay, why aren't we stoking, though? Jump. Right. Doesn't really matter. Wow. But, yeah. I, that was a really good I think Alex turn. is dead if we just... That is another stoke, right? I, I believe it is, yes. Oh. Alright, well, Alex is at five. So that was a five power guy. If we stoked, we would have killed him. No, that was higher than... Alex was at twelve before. Oh, he's a seven power dude? Yeah. <laughs> he, he he got... May Gusta. Holy cow. So, Sarkin? Nope. That one's a stinker against the board of tokens. I mean, it, yeah, I guess it lets you shoot something, but... That's what I. That's what I say about these, uh, and, and I think it's something we know too. Is that whether it's just guy tokens or just guy aggro, like the, there's really not good, almost one for one for one removal unless it's arc lightning, correct? Uh, I mean, like scouring sands is pretty good against the. Okay, tokens. sure, but but those are cards that I think people who aren't actively looking uh, often overlook. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what do you what do you got for sideboards here? So. On Alex's side, he has three Disdainful Strokes, an Erase, a Glare of Heresy, two End Hostilities, one Chandra Pyromancer, two Elspeths, mm -hmm. one Negate, two Bravaz, and two Anger of the Gods. I imagine he's going to bring in Erase, Glare of Heresy. Chandra, I think, is probably fine here. Uh, Negate, probably pretty good here. Anger of the Gods, for sure. Bramaz, for sure. Yeah, you always, always with the Bramaz. You're, you're a... so good against the token deck. <laughs> You're that Bramaz fan. Yeah, his tokens trade with their tokens. That's true. And he's a 3 four. Unless their tokens are 7 powered yeah. soldier tokens. Right. That's why we have a race and glare of You're right, for. correct. And negate. Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I think your sideboarding options are, are right, because we've gone we've gone through that matchup a ton, so I can't imagine the the tokens list might play something a little bit more different, so we can take Moving a look at on that. the tokens, they have uh, 3 Disdainful Strokes, yep. 2 Magma Sprays, 2 Glare of Heresies, 2 Storm Breath Dragons. Two anti hostilities, <laughs> an arc lightning, a negate, an erase, and a valor stance. Interesting. So he has that ability here to like transition sort of into a less of a token deck. Mm -hmm. I like Storm Breath Dragon. I'm not gonna lie. Card seems good. He has like seems good against one. the Manus Riders. Yeah, it's good against Manus Rider. It's hard for this deck to kill. Yeah. Uh, those I think are pretty good. Okay. Glare of Heresies. I saw Seeker and Manus Rider. <clears throat> it's probably enough for me to bring him in. Yeah. Um. Negate. Arc Lightning, I'm bringing that in. Kills mm -hmm. Manus Rider, potentially kills Gravel Master plus Token if he sure. left those in, which I don't think he left them in. I don't think that card is very good. Uh, Magma Spray, potentially, but probably not. To kill, like, Seeker of the Ways. I like Seeker of the Ways. I think Alex is boarding some of them out, but I, I like them. I hate Gravel Master. It stinks. You don't like Gravel Master? No. Why not? It doesn't do any... It trades straight up. Mm -hmm. and I guess it doesn't on the play, when you're on the play. I don't know, I don't like it. Okay. I don't have. Do I have to have a reason? I mean, you kind of do, no, because you can't say you just don't like the card. I just don't like it. It trades with all of his removal. Um, uh, sure, I, but, but once again, we know if that card is played on the three and unanswered, the card is nuts. <laughs> sure, but in the Jeskai deck, they're always going to have an answer. Correct, they usually do. You're not wrong. Like, the chances of them not having an answer, especially when you're taking out your Seeker of the Ways... Mm -hmm. So, like, if they use one of their answers on a Seeker of the Way, 
all right, they're one less answer, maybe my Realm Master sticks and lives. Mm -hmm. But when you take those out, now they're, like, pretty much a lock to have an answer. Some way to get, remove it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So You're I, not wrong. I, I don't know, I just... It's like a hard card to, like, stick, you know? Yeah. It's like you want to stick it when your opponent has no removal or they're tapped out, but it's pretty difficult, I feel like. I mean, I'd rather not play them in this matchup. And I, plus, like, they trade with Raise the Alarm and Hordling Alpers, like, sure. the tokens. Ugh. But, I mean, at least you're eliminating your, your opponent's board state in that situation to some degree, you know yeah. what I mean? Because the tokens deck really needs that that broad, that broad token... Uh, board that we kind of saw Jacob have in game one. I'm more interested in casting, like, Mana Strider. Yeah, very true. Oh, dang, you're getting called out. You get wrecked by some uh, some Goblin Masters last night? Did I? Yeah, I did. Did you? Yeah. Jeez, you got smoked? Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> dang. Did I? Yeah, I think I, yeah, I did. I totally did. Game two. Game two? Against Black Red, yeah. Rabble Black Master, Rabble Master, kill you? <clears throat> yeah. Why didn't, why didn't you answer him? Why didn't I answer them? Yeah. I'm playing heroic. There is no answer. Oh, okay. the, you can't kill the answer is master. block. When your opponent has a bunch of removal spells yeah. and your two twos, yeah, you pretty much okay. Just so die. you just block. Oh yeah, there's Matt's all about the biased casting. Oh, for sure. <laughs> That's all you'll get out of him. Yeah. So Alex going to mulligan. You just got to remember, there's a uh, there's cards coming. There's some cards. Ultimate price still being printed. I'm already unsleeving my heroic. <laughs> I'm trying to get as many games in as I can with it. Yeah, and then just I never move it away. Play it again. And then you have to remember that like it's still really good against mono blue. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. Yeah, so it's Bioblight and Drone and Throw. So are all the black cards. <laughs> sure. Ouch. Must be nice to play with black. Yeah, I don't know. I I haven't really thought about what I want to play coming up here in the next format. I'd like to play a. a White blue control deck, if that's possible. You mean what you want to build and have other people play for you? Yes, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I don't get to play. Yeah, there is still the white blue hoplite. Unfortunately, he dies to. I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm done with. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with all that. Like I'm that deck was cool while it while it lasted. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna play. Uh, that's what I like, like black. Cons of Tarkir Theros uh, standard for the rest of my life. Okay. I'm, I'm only going to play that. People are going to ask me, uh, like, you want to play games of magic? And I'll be like, all right, we're going to play Cons of Tarkir Theros standard. You got a deck? Yeah. And I'll be, they'll be like, no. And I'll be like, good, I have all of them built. <laughs> Let's play. <laughs> and they just hand them. Yeah. I, can you imagine? I bet there's some poor sap out there who spent a lot of money on Mono Black Devotion and, like, still plays that deck, like, casually with his friends who, who play standard now and he's like, we'll play my standard deck. <laughs> and he's like, turn one, Thoughtseize, you turn two, pack rat. And they're like, oh, darn. God, this is so funny. Yeah. No, that guy doesn't have friends. He probably doesn't no. anymore. <laughs> he probably does not. So Alex on a mulligan to five has a turn one flooded strain. Jacob on a seven card hand. An eight card hand after drawing for the turn. Jeez. Gonna play a Temple of Triumph. And pass back. And Alex, that looks like a man who doesn't have a second land. He That's does not. That's dangerous. Mystic Monastery. That is not a land. Pass back. Stoke. Oh, boy. That is a raise the alarm. And it looks like Jacob's going to play a oh, Battlefield oh. Forge. Nope. Oh. Another Mystic Monastery. I was Monastery? about to say, if he plays that Battlefield Ship Forge and we see a Rabble Master, we are in trouble. That one, not, an, not, not a land either. Oh, And a raise the alarm. This one could be over quickly. We're going to get some games of Legacy it in, might fella. Be. <laughs> Let's, I'm going to get my Infect deck out right yeah. now. Let's we'll do it. And we'll just slam and jam some games in between. Bash for two. Oh, Put him to 18. Alex, you are in a oh. bad spot, bud. Alex, you are in a great spot. Why I haven't we cracked this fetch yet? After after I would <laughs> didn't draw another land, I would have cracked the fetch. So you could thin your deck so I just a marginal percentage? I mean, just, just to shuffle my deck, because it's... Nope, we're not there. That's a lightning strike. Alex going to show him his hand. pretty mad. He's going to say Go. He's still in this game. So I, I. Oh, okay. Right. Well, Alex gonna scoop it up. I think that was faster than even you expected, huh? Yeah, there have been a lot of moles to five tonight. Uh, it, it, no, he didn't. He didn't pile. Sh I don't even. He pile shuffled, but did like, he? Yeah, he didn't pile shuffle. Like, oh, well, I guess he kind of did. He just threw his cards in a pile. <laughs> Jeez. Well, that's a quick uh, Some sixty card pickup. That's a quick two zero from Jacob Jensen over Alex Pressing in round four. Yep. So it looks like we're gonna have the finals coming up here soon. Indeed. Uh, after this round, wow. Maybe, maybe Robbie Romanowski running it back with the red-white mid-range deck. That'd be nuts. Be That'd nuts. be pretty sweet. 
I don't know who else is out there at uh, XO. Boy, that was crazy. That was probably <laughs> one of the fastest games we've seen all night. Yeah, that sign me up. Now we can play 31 minutes of Legacy. Or we could talk to Twitch chat. Yeah, we could play Legacy. You want to play Legacy while we talk to Twitch chat? I don't think that'd be a good idea. <laughs> that'd be a great I can't idea. focus. Oh, yeah. But right. you can't I mean, multitask? I can't multitask, but it'd be it, it'd be interesting to see I don't know. I I I'm I'm all over the place. That was a very I I feel like Alex could have gotten out of that to some degree and just decided not to. I feel like the throwing the cards on the table was kind of a cop out. Yeah. We could go play we could go play at the feature match table or match of legacy and the Twitch chat could watch us. Okay, hold on. Well, see, we've already got questions. So, how does Legacy Infect differ from Modern Infect? That's you. That's all you. How does Legacy Infect differ from Modern how Infect? Does, that's the question. How does Legacy Infect differ from Modern Infect? It plays Infect? Invigorate, which is a free pump spell. And it plays Berserk. It can kill on turn two with Counterspell backup. It plays Brainstorm, so it's more consistent. It's okay. a better deck. So you just think the consistency is key? And the pump spells are obviously better? Yeah, the pump spells are better and the deck's more consistent because it gets to play Brainstorm. You also have access to... Obviously, better counter magic. Yeah, right. Like, you get way play, better. You get to play legit counter magic. Yeah, you don't get to play like like I'm Apostles gonna, Blessing. I'm gonna, well, I'd rather play Days. <laughs> Give me Days and Force of Will. Well, I'm gonna. I, well, I can't even think of the name. What's the the shoal? The, the awful it, it, disrupting crap, shoal. Yeah, crap. Force of Will. Oh. <laughs> what well, disrupting shoal? Uh, what we have? Oh, uh, you're looking for deckless for tonight's F and M. We do not have deckless. Uh, players fill out sideboard. Yeah. list for us, uh, because a lot of the times at FNM you'll see uh, most of the players testing out pro lists, you know what I mean, uh, lists that you can find either uh, available on on uh, articles that pros have written and things like that, but uh, if, if Wizards wanted to troll everyone, they could reprint Groff's Messenger and Origins and revive MBD for the summer, oh god, <laughs> let's hope not. They already got the, oh man, imagine exploit with Groff's Messenger, with Undying. Oh, it'd be awesome. <laughs> It'd be sweet. Yeah. Draw's Messenger, a card I liked. I thought that was a really well-designed card. It was very cool. Yeah. I hated playing against that card. Yeah. Did you Did you ever have to play against, like, you remember the Aristocrats deck? Did you ever play against that? Uh, I played against the Aristocrats deck. deck. Uh, there was, like, when I first got back into the game, Yeah. the big deck was the Black Red Zombies deck. Yeah, that was a really popular deck, too. For sure. I played Pillar of Flame. Pillar of Flame was a very good card. And is it Stanicaster? <laughs> yeah, also a good card. Woo woo! Is it Stanicaster? God, I love that card. That's is like it Stanicaster? Card I play in Sideboard and Legacy. That's a that's a Sideboard Miracles card. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we we should also mention to some degree that we do have pre-release coming up soon for uh, for Dragons of Dark here here at Nerd Rage Gaming. Uh, if you're in the Chicagoland area, make sure you <coughs> head over to NerdRageGaming.com right now and uh, sign up for pre-release packages. Uh, we have a midnight event. We have a 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. event on Saturday, March 21st. And then on Sunday, March 22nd, we have a 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. event. Uh, the VIP package that's available online is entry to all five of those events. And on top of that, you get a free VIP-only pre-release playmat that has super sick artwork on it. Uh, so I advise heading over to NerdRageGaming.com right now and signing up for... Uh, for one of these events. You can also check out the pre-order for singles while you're there. Definitely. Those are up now as well. Yeah, I just for, just remembered or was just told that it's my yeah. girlfriend's birthday on March 25th first. So like, Whoops! Should I play in a pre-release? Uh, or? Here's what I do. This is how I handle those things. I bring her to a pre-release <laughs> and then I just kind of ignore her. <laughs> and then I go about my day. So like I play in the pre-release and I'm like, are you, uh, you check in every now and again. You're like, oh honey, do you open sweet cards? And she's like, well I got like a dragon. You're like, oh that's, hey, that's stellar. And then you turn around and you're like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, it's like bringing a simpleton brother to like a party. Like you don't, you don't want to leave him there alone, but you want to be in included. Like, just pass her off to somebody else. If you see another girl there... Oh, man, perfect. That's also a good idea. They can... They, like, two girls can meet. Why? What if I just, like, go to the pre-release and then buy her a nice gift? Oh, that'd be cool. Car. With that Dow money. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm not baby. gonna buy her a car. Why? I don't have that kind of money. Yes, you do. Don't lie to me. <laughs> Do not, do not even <laughs> no, attempt I don't, to lie to I me. I currently am not in the position to buy, buy my cars? girlfriend a car. So you're, you're just not... I mean, like, I could do it. It would not be a fiscally responsible thing to do. Very true. Like, I could go, like, take out a loan and be like, hey, I got you a car. The loan's <laughs> under my name. <laughs> so let's see. We've got... Uh, so here you go. You've got uh, folks talking about Mono Blue. Uh, you, I would get in a Mono Blue standard, the 3-drop elemental, the 1-1 one, one that can't be blocked. 
but Thassa is leaving soon. What's everyone think about the new legendary creature Planeswalk, Liliana, especially her relationship to the tiny leader format? That's interesting. Uh, we were talking about this earlier uh, before we started FNM, and I think both Matt and I were kind of on the same page that she's definitely a cool card. Uh, I personally do not like uh, the fact that they kind of designed that card uh, in the way that the the legendary creatures to Planeswalkers work to cater to the EDH community. Um, if if you think that there is any other reason they designed the card to work like that, uh, as far as the flipping mechanic, you need to kind of understand how much money they want to make off of said EDH community. Um yeah, exactly. And look, people are already talking about the... So if you watch the PAX stream today, where they had the Wizards of the Coast panel, uh, one of the questions was asked, when will Wizards of the Coast begin to support the Tiny Leaders format uh, as far as making like pre-constructed decks? Uh, one guy even just straight came out and asked, hey, why don't we have a legendary Sultai guy yet that's three mana so I can play for Tiny Leaders? And the direct response from Wizards was, the format's still incredibly new, we don't know if it's going to make us money, so we're not putting any investment into it right sure. now. They uh, are a company. They are a business. They correct. They're trying yeah. to make as much money as possible. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes, you are... Uh, Clayton Clay Davis is correct. Those cards, the way they designed those cards is solely for EDH. They didn't... I can guarantee you they did not think in their head, hey, when these cards hit Constructed people are really going to enjoy the fact that there is like a flipping mechanic from legendary creature to planeswalker. Uh, they literally just designed the card for EDH. So, you know, they, they got that there. I don't know. I like them. I think they're cool. You can hate them. They're sweet. I like them. They're really flavorful. I, I think they're flavorful. I think the, the creature itself and the planeswalker itself are both powerful and too, not that overpowered, but I agree. the The Q and A session at PAX was terrible. The oh, yeah, questions that, that were being that asked were awful. Like they they should half of those questions should have been shot down. They immediately. don't screen the questions. You just walk up to a microphone and get yeah. asked questions. Yeah, you walk up and can ask literally whatever you want. Uh, I I don't even think I'm I i was not so much just saying for tiny leaders as far as the other four planeswalkers being three CMC. I'm just saying the way they designed a legendary creature that flips into a planeswalker. Was was essentially designed f with EDH in mind, not necessarily tiny leaders, but just EDH. What if I? What if it was said it was just a three mana Liliana Planeswalker that you could play as your commander? I wouldn't even like that. No, I don't. I don't. It's not that I don't like the commanders as Planeswalkers. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that they were catering to certain people and a certain format when they designed those cards. I just think they're sweet. I think you're wrong. I think they're sweet. Get okay, I'm not. I'm, and I'm not saying that they're not sweet. Um, I think they have the ability, like, they have, they're nice in that they're flip cards, which people like, mm -hmm. they're f fun, they're flavorful, they're interesting, and they, yeah, they still happen to also go well in EDH, so I think, like, I mean, if somebody pitched that idea to me in a meeting, I'm just like, hey, we can make these, like, legendary creatures that are iconic, uh, or the planeswalkers that are iconic legendary creatures, so mm -hmm. they can be played in EDH, yep. but we also get, like, a flip card, which everybody loved from Innistrad. I did not, I... I I I liked you're I like Hunt's Master of the Fells and grump. Garuk. You're a grump. I'm not a grump. How is that? How does that make me grump? I think that I think people like the flip cards. I think that they were well received. They were. So you get checkmark there. Okay. Checkmark on iconic things. Correct. Check iconic on yep. like new things where mm -hmm. it's like uh, legendary creature into planeswalker. Mm -hmm. Check on EDH crowd likes it because it's legendary creature into planeswalker. Okay. Uh, I'm sign me up. People, like it's a core set. People typically don't buy those core sets, mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is going to be a well-selling one, uh, and I'm going to make a lot of money. I think. Yeah, I, and more I, money than, than like an M16 would have made. I agree with you. I and I don't think the set is bad. I think Magic Origins as a whole is a very good set, uh, and I like the idea of them kind of uh, being able to do like this whole re rehash of the story for all these planeswalkers. I think that's really cool. I personally would have liked to have seen the Planeswalkers as either just legendary creatures and them not as Planeswalkers, or them as Planeswalkers but kind of like fledgling versions of themselves with legendary creatures who dealt with them. You know what I mean? Not them in legendary creature form. So maybe you have Jace as a Planeswalker and the legendary creature in blue is like the guy who taught him magic. 
You know what I sure. mean? Or Liliana's brother is like a zombie legendary creature, but she is a she is a planeswalker. I think they could have done that. Uh, um, maybe they still will. Yeah, they could have. Uh, the Kamigawa flip cards. I will tell you, Kamigawa almost made me stop playing Magic. <laughs> the Kamigawa flip cards are just awful. They, they are. They are. They not look good. ugly. They're hideous. Correct. Never bring them back. Burn them off. Yeah, I, some of the cards are powerful. They just are not. Oh God. Uh, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I I also agree with that statement too. They they did kind of so that that was one of the worried questions that was asked at PAX. One of the a gentleman stood up and said, because Magic Origins is focusing on planeswalkers, are there going to be less planeswalkers in the set? Because he was he was effectively worried that there weren't going to be enough planeswalkers. How many planeswalkers does he want? I, well, that's so 262 in, planeswalkers. Right. So in my head, I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Like this guy, all this guy wants is more planeswalkers." Which I can tell you, if you have ever heard my spiel on that, I am against. Pla I want a set without planeswalkers. Me too. Sign me up. Yeah, I would love a set that has no planeswalkers yep, in it. I would agree. It would be great. And no creatures. So when this guy stands up at packs and he's like, "I'm worried that there aren't enough planeswalkers in a set with five with five planeswalkers." <laughs> And he's like, he's like, because in, in core there were a lot of planeswalkers, so I'm worried there won't be a lot of planeswalkers from here on out. And the guy's like, rest assured, there will always be the same amount of planeswalkers. Oh, I get what he's saying then. Sure, right. I understand his but, his complaint then. Yeah, because like there are six. There have been six planeswalkers in the past. Correct. Couple of core sets, and they're doing away with them. Yes. So I, I get his I get his worries. I don't. I I would love a set that doesn't have planeswalkers. Me too. Though. Especially now that they're going to two block happen. set. It it never won't. It will happen. not happen because legendary creatures are not iconic enough anymore to fund wizards' payroll. Yeah. That's and that's plain and simple. They just aren't. Back in the day of, you know, Garard and Tangarth and and Sisse and all these people yeah, who were legendary. Sucked. It didn't matter though because they were legendary and you had them because they were sweet. Yeah, and people. Now you've smells. got planeswalkers. <laughs> Who half the wait? Tybalt sucked. I mean, there were there were planeswalkers that sucked. Sure. I don't know. People still it, like Tybalt though. I, well, Tybalt is classy. He's classy as hell. I mean, he, his artwork's amazing. So <laughs> he's swagging on kids. So I don't know. And that may have been a rant. Was, we'll take a quick we'll take a quick break here before we get into the finals. Unless anyone has any questions. I know we kind of we were all over the place there. Like that was a long. That was you just complaining about a lot of things. But hey, th a lot of these guys agree. I mean, you can't. What, we already know that Gideon Blank is coming in Zendikar. Well, it was, wasn't it, if I remember the pack stream today, it was also, they finally revealed that Gideon was from Theros. Really? Yeah, he is actually a Theros-born planeswalker. Why didn't he show up in Theros, then? Uh, it was interesting, because for a long time, uh, due to Duels of the Planeswalker 2012, the first duels, he was supposedly from Bant, the same shard of Alar that Esper, or Elspeth, was from. Yeah. Right? Uh, and then they retcon that because they've also been, and I hate to kind of say this, they've also been kind of retcon his race, technically. Like, they wanted him to be more of like a, um, God, I don't even know what to say, like a, more of like an Islander kind of style, like a Hawaiian kind of variance instead of just like, a old white guy hero. They wanted him to have like yeah, kind of this background. Some ethnicity. Yeah, um, and now they're all retconning that, and that's, they're, they're doing that. So they revealed that he was from Theros, which... Why isn't he on Theros then? Like, yeah, why didn't he show up? I don't know. It was very. Why didn't he show up when Xenagos is trying to take over? Yeah, I, that was another guy. I don't think they should have killed off. He was a really cool planeswalker. Unless we get Domri back at some point, like a red green planeswalker. Domri's still around, right? Yes, Domri never left. He's like Ral. He like was on, on Ravnica and just never left. Never went anywhere. Ral never.